Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desa. I am a consultant, gastrointestinal and hepatobiliary surgeon at Lilavati Hospital, Mumbai. Today we are going to discuss some of the common risk factors and causes for colon cancer or large intestinal cancer. And we are also going to see if there are any options to prevent these cancers or detect them early. There are some screening programs that are present so we can have a look at that as well. I am sure all of you know, but where is the large intestine located in the body? It is in the lower part of the abdomen. It actually extends in most of the abdomen. So you can see the ascending colon, transverse colon, the descending colon and the rectum and inner canal. So this is basically the large intestine, rectum and inner canal, the part of intestine that we are going to study today. What does the large intestine do? I am sure most of you know that it is the reservoir for stools. It stores the stool, but more than that, large intestine is the most important part of the body for absorption of water and electrolytes. Okay, So if the large intestine is not there, a lot of absorption of water and electrolytes does not happen. Rectum provides the sensation for solid, liquid and gas content. And it actually helps us in holding the stools till we reach a socially acceptable location. So that is one of the functions of rectum as a reservoir. Of course, it helps for elimination of waste after solidification. And basically, it is also known simply as a muscular tube for stools evacuation. So these are basically the functions of large intestine. When we come to risk factors for large intestinal cancer, Smoking, alcohol and obesity again are common risk factors for large intestinal cancer. Diabetes type 2 is also a risk factor. As we have seen, it processes food. So there are dietary factors that increase the risk, especially processed and fried meats and red meat is associated as a risk factor for large intestinal cancer. Now, when we see all these risk factors, we can see that there is scope for prevention. Put a goal as alcohol and smoking cessation, we target to at least reduce it, lifestyle measures and dietary changes. So these are some of the preventive strategies that you can implement for large intestinal cancer. Having discussed that, there are a lot of non-modifiable risk factors when it comes to large intestine cancer. And this is where it is different from liver or gallbladder cancer where the non-modifiable risk factors are only age and gender. But here, personal history and family history is very important and this is essentially non-modifiable. So if you have a personal history of polypadenoma or a non-cancerous growth in colorectum or you have ulcerative colitis or inflammatory bowel disease as it is commonly known or there is a family history of hereditary syndromes or adenomatous polyps or of colorectal cancer. So personal history, family history, and genetic mutations, if any of these are present, they become non-modifiable risk factors. For colorectal cancer, there are many hereditary syndromes that are present. The most common ones are familial adenomatous polyposis, HNPCC, Peutz-Jagers syndrome, other polyposis syndromes. And in all of these factors, there is scope for early detection by screening and surveillance. Screening and surveillance you can do with fecal local blood test and colonoscopy, genetic counseling and genetic testing, and in some cases, prophylactic surgery. So if you have a history that is important, this history can become a data point for AI models as well. If family history and personal history of cancer, adenomas, or inflammatory bowel disease is present, these are the people who can be screened for early detection. If we can start identifying these patients early, we can diagnose the cancers early and then maybe proceed towards the goal of prophylactic surgeries. So role of screening and genetic counseling in very high in patients with colorectal cancer. Who should approach the doctor for genetic counseling? A person who has a family with more than three relatives with cancer. This can be any cancer in the body. So it's very commonly ask that what if someone has skin cancer or gastric cancer? Well, you don't need to decide on whether it's a risk factor or not. The best thing you can do is if you have a family with more than three people with cancer, meet a doctor. 
family has a person with a cancer at their younger age, say you have a 40 year old who has cancer, then that family can be harboring a hereditary cancer syndrome. Second cancer in same person, you should approach a doctor. Polyps at young age is again a risk factor and should enroll into screening. Ulcerative colitis patients should always be on screening colonoscopy. Role of prophylactic surgery, if the patient has passed more than 20 years of disease history, there is a very high risk of cancer in this subset of patients of ulcerative colitis. And that is why prophylactic surgery is being offered with patients who have been more than 20 years on medication. If there is no such history, that is, if there is no history from any of the above and person is more than 45 years of age, person can at least do a fecal local blood test if there are other risk factors present. How to suspect or identify colorectal disease? The most common symptom is fresh or altered blood in stools or bleeding per rectum. But remember that bleeding per rectum is more commonly seen in benign diseases as well, such as fissure. So if there is a painful bleeding, fissure is common, hemorrhoids are common. But in older age group, if you see bleeding, then always subject the patient to colonoscopy. Incomplete evacuation sensation will take to repeated visits to washroom. Alteration in bowel habits. Alternating diarrhea and constipation is a very important history when it comes to colorectal cancer. If there is unplanned or unintentional weight loss, loss of appetite, crampy abdominal pain, feeling of a lump in abdomen or a palpable growth, these are some of the symptoms of colorectal cancer. A very important indicator is if a patient, especially males, elderly, have anemia, you have to rule out colon colonic cancer, especially the right-sided colonic cancer. So anemia in elderly males should not be missed, right? So these are some of the symptoms which should prompt you to visit a doctor. So what are the prevention strategies for colorectal cancer? As we have already discussed, lifestyle and dietary measures, quit alcohol and smoking, increase whole grains and high fiber in your diet, vegetables, fruits and dairy products, calcium and vitamin D supplementation to normal values. All these factors have been studied to help prevent or at least reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. For early identification, know your hereditary risk Personal risk, these are non-modifiable risk factors, but if you are enrolled in a screening program or you have done a genetic counseling and you know that you have a Lynch syndrome or a FAP, then this is the subset of patients who can be enrolled for yearly stool test, at least once in three year colonoscopy, CT scan and genetic testing. Identify your symptoms, identify your risk and meet your doctor immediately. Patients with long-standing bowel disease such as inflammatory bowel disease need to be on regular screening surveillance with the doctor. It is important that these patients are screened regularly, tumor markers are done, and we take care that we identify these patients early. It is only if you identify them early that you can provide curative options for these cancers. So understand all these risk factors, understand the symptoms at each level of healthcare, if you see any of these symptoms, test your patients for cancer. If we identify them early, we can give them cure. Thank you.